Hey everybody, this is Tamlin Hislop from The Happiness Consultancy bringing you The Happiness Show, which is all about passion, purpose and creating happiness in your life and in the lives of others. And I'm really excited today to be hosting Mutsa Samuel, critical thought leader and motivational speaker here in Zimbabwe and around the world. So this is a real privilege for me to be hosting you today. So thank, thank you. you for coming on the thank show. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. So the first time that I met Mutsa was a couple of weeks ago. Um, I met him through friends. And what really struck me about Mutsa was his passion for what he does. He was so, so certain about the path that he was on and the area that he works in. And he was so passionate about it. And that really, really resonated with me because as you know, passion, purpose, and happiness is something very, very close to my heart. Right, 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 right. So I'm very intrigued and interested to hear your story. Okay. So okay. how you came to be where you are today, how you came to find your passion. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Um, and ditto, I also kind of felt your passion as well, by the way. I think it's Great. important to mention it was it was both ways. Um, how did I end up where I am? Um, so I believe that my passion started when I was in high school and what it was was a passion to communicate with people but more so than just on a surface level. Mm -hmm. I always realized that there was something more than just what we saw, what we felt, what we touched, just mm -hmm. beyond our five senses. Um, and there were many ways where I tried to look for that. Mm -hmm. So I, met, I happened to go to a Jesuit school. so. I guess the easiest thing was to find it in religion and spirituality. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward a few years, I went to the United States for my uh, undergraduate, mm -hmm. where I did a pre-medicine in human biology, minors in psychology and sociology. And being in a liberal arts education, mm -hmm. it allowed you to not just study your major, mm -hmm. but also different things. Mm -hmm. So I did things like art, and that's how I also found my minors, like psychology and sociology. Nice, you had influences uh, from did, yeah. lots of different things, which is, which is incredible. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And, and I really took advantage of my university experience. I went to two universities while I was in the States. Um, you know, I, I played sports, I interacted in different clubs, and I made sure that um, I, 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 I made my vision known to mm -hmm. the world. You know, um, America is a place which will try to define you. Mm -hmm. And I realized that everyone was telling me who I was. Mm -hmm. Oh no, you're you're not African. You're mm -hmm. Africans are tall and dark, you know. Mm -hmm. Or you, no, you're from Chicago. You don't speak like an African, you know. Yeah. So uh, everyone was defining me, mm -hmm. and I realized that I needed to define myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's just like no, that's not who I am. So on that journey of finding out and discovering who I was, I dabbled in, in different things to kind of figure out. Um, and I think that's where. I, Sorry, how did you how did you know that you weren't that what they were defining you as? Well, because I tried to be that, and it was uncomfortable. Okay, good. Yeah. So this is a good point. Yeah. So you know when you're being authentic, when you're being yeah. you, when you feel on yeah. purpose, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a feeling inside. It, is. Okay. it, re it really is. And, and, and so, you know, when, when you try to assimilate into a culture, you know, um, and I think that happens naturally anywhere you go, and it just feels uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not one that tries to force things. It mm -hmm. felt uncomfortable. I, I took it out until I found something that was comfortable that I could say, this is me, awesome. you know, so, yeah, yeah. almost trial and error. Yes. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that I did dabble in in the States was uh, poetry. So oh, wow. I, I started writing slam poetry and found out I was pretty good at it, won some competitions. Jeez. Um, and I paid some of my university through winning those competitions. Really? Yeah. Wow. So yeah. you'll have to uh, <laughs> share one of your poems on uh, well, I could, I could, yeah. If you pay me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how much? <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so, so through that I realized that I, I, I liked the connection when I was up on stage mm -hmm. and speaking with people. Mm -hmm. um, and Can I say something yeah, there? Please. Sorry, again, that's a key point there. I liked the connection when I was up on stage connecting with people. So that's a sign he's, yeah. you're living on purpose with doing your passion. You like the feeling. Yeah, okay. that's exactly right. Um, and, and, and I decided to take it a step further because um, I'm an avid reader. I love to read. Um, it's been instilled in me since I was young. And it just so happened my roommate was the same way. So we started reading a whole bunch of books on different things and issues that were affecting people in the United States, um, primarily due to socioeconomic status, race, religion, mm -hmm. and all of those things. 
um, and we decided to, hey, you know what, we're both poets, why don't we try this speaking thing? So we set up a company, this was in my third year of university, wow. called Art Presentations. And we went out and we spoke on issues of diversity. And you know, Incredible. we spoke at high schools, colleges, universities, we were invited to conferences. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we, we did pretty well. And, and that was, I think, the point when I said, I like this, I'm going to continue. So how did you feel when you were on that stage? Like, I know you mentioned that I like it, but like when you were standing up there presenting these issues on you know, race and diversity, right. and like how did that make you feel when you... It's, 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 uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's hard to describe because I think words would almost limit it, mm -hmm. you know. It's, 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 I think we've all had that feeling. Mm -hmm. And we have that feeling when we were a kid, when we first took our few steps and we just realized, well, what is this thing we're doing? We're yeah. walking now. Or when we first learned to ride a bike or learn to swim mm -hmm. or pass a test or, or, or get our first kiss. It's that right. thing that's just, just like, what is that, you know? And, and I can't describe it. Um, but that, I think that yeah. that's because it's inscribable. It's like it's your passion. Yeah, so it is. Yeah. I I think I often describe it as like my heart beats differently mm. when I'm doing. Yeah, that, that's so. that's certainly true. Yeah, yeah. It's and, and you get that nervousness and anxiety before you go on stage. Yes. You know, but you own it. Which is natural. Yeah. Which is natural. Yeah. I use I get a sore all the time. Whereas a lot of people think they get nervous and anxiety. It's, yeah. Bad. Yeah, exactly. but good. You embrace it. You, you embrace own it, it. Own it, and convert it into whatever that thing is, that medium is. You know. um, yeah. Okay, great. So wonderful journey. Yeah. Okay, and what really stood out for me is there is that you're an avid <coughs> learner mm -hmm. and, and reader, and you really feed your mind. Yeah. Okay, so that that's very uh, that's key. How I guess you went about finding your right. passion. You right. you. Put yourself in a position where you could feed your mind and you tried lots of different things. I did. You were curious. I was curious. I was curious. And, it, and in fact, actually, after we, we did our seminars, I, I had to leave the United States because um, that was when I was still wanting to become a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. And um, But uh, it was expensive for foreign students and they weren't providing any loans. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, moved, I came back to Zim for a gap year. And I decided to either go into doing entrepreneurship mm -hmm. at uh, University of Cape Town, mm -hmm. or to continue my medicine, where I would have started as a third-year med student mm -hmm. in uh, Fitz University. Um, and I guess another key point in this journey is choice and deciding. Mm -hmm. I had a choice to either stick with what I was doing or do something completely different. And I said, you know what? Something's calling me to this entrepreneurship, and I just went for that. And I just, I just took a leap of faith and said, you know what? I'm following the same feeling that I've been feeling, you know. And I went and I did it. And so I did a one-year postgrad course in entrepreneurial strategy. I worked as a management consultant for two and a half years, but all during that time I was still speaking on the mm. side. Um, I, it just couldn't get away from me. Mm. Um, and then I changed my topic when I moved back to Africa from diversity to leadership. Nice. Um, I realized that there was a lack of all-encompassing leadership in Africa, you know, and it wasn't being, nothing was being transferred, yeah. um, and it wasn't holistic, mm -hmm. so I said, you know what, there's a gap here, and there's young people that need, you know, people with integrity, mm -hmm. you know, to, to guide them, you know, and I also need that as well, um, so I also went looking for it, I found mentors when I was in South Africa, and they guided me as well, and um, started doing seminars there, and then moved back to Zimbabwe five years ago, and Continue. Oh, incredible. What an amazing story. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I also think it's um, key to mention that often on the journey to find our passion and our purpose, mm -hmm. there's, there's obstacles, there's roadblocks, there's things that come up, there's choices and decisions that we have to make. And I think a key point is that we are in control of how we respond and how we react and what kind of decisions we make. And we learn a lot of lessons along the way. So none of it are mistakes. No, no. It's all building know. blocks for, for yeah. life. I, I call mistakes learnings, honestly. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, incredible. Yeah. So so what would you say your passion has been in a nutshell? Right. My passion I would say is transforming people. Amazing. I like to see it when it's like a, you know how happy it is when a farmer sees their crop. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, we, we put in that effort and we don't know what's gonna happen. Something's happening 
underneath there, but all I did was plant a seed. Mm -hmm. And I feel that the same way when, when people's consciousness shifts, when their mindsets shift. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, now you get it, you know. I, I, I believe people have gifts. Um, yes. and, um, and, and, and I believe my gift is to see the potential of people, mm -hmm. even if they don't see them themselves. Um, Can and, you show it to them, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it, it's, it's like, here, I'm, I'm, I'm here to just remind you who you really are, yeah. um, but it's still up to you whether you want to do it or not. Yeah, yeah. well, you, you always plant the seed, and yeah, then that's it. they've got to go and do the watering and then putting the sunshine yeah. on it, right? And when they do, that's I'm the result. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Incredible. So yeah. your passion has been transformation. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And tell me, what's that, what about your purpose? My purpose? This is a big word, and a lot of people get stuck with this. They're like, I don't know what my purpose is, right, and who right, I am, right, and what right, I'm right, doing. Right. I would say my purpose is to to remind people to contribute to the greater society. Um, wow. I'm almost, you know, my middle name is Mufundisi, right, which means pastor or reverend, mm -hmm. and I was named that after my my grandfather who was a Methodist pastor. So it's almost as if my destiny was already aligned, or my purpose was already named Pass to me. Pass on that yeah. message. From so, 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 am I a pastor? No. But, mm -hmm. I, in a way I am, because I'm speaking a message. You're, you're, tr you're yeah. delivering a message. Delivering, yeah. yeah. That, like my grandfather did. Yeah. So, there is that connection. So I think that's, that, that's what I would say my purpose is. That's incredible. Yeah. So, uh, your purpose is to deliver the message that you feel that the world needs. I, I, yes, that's it. And, and in order to do that, you have to be authentic. You know, you can't, you know. Yeah, it doesn't come from other people no. through you. It's, it's, it's from you. Yeah. And um, how did you find that? Whew. All these deep questions. Um, <laughs> about 10,000 hours of meditation. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, um, to be honest, it's various avenues. Um, I, I do meditate. Um, I've been to India twice um, for periods of, of a month. Um, wow. And that's where I go to find my space. And I, I really think it's important because we live in a world externally all the time with all these external stimuli and we never internalize and really find out who we really are. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important on a regular basis to just kind of get all the junk and noise, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a noisy world, there's so many distractions, mm -hmm. and to clear that space, then it's almost like the channel is clear, you know. And yeah. that's when inspiration flows in, purpose, passion, answers, all of that. That's it, that's it. Oh, incredible. That's it. Oh. Yeah. I really want to go to India and, <laughs> and sit on a mountain and you meditate. I, I meditate welcome. every day as well, but <coughs> it's, um, I think it probably yeah. feels a bit more right. profound when, right, you, when you're there. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, That's great. It, yeah. that. So, yeah. you know your passion and your purpose, mm -hmm. and you shared your journeys, how you got there. Right. So what would you say to some other people who may be watching this show, who are thinking, I don't know what my passion and purpose is, and what's one tip, mm. perhaps, that, you can, that they can do to help find theirs? Mm. Okay. Um, be curious. That would be my number one advice right now. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is that so many things that are so prominent in my life now only got there because I was curious about something. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. Um, I, was, I was in my third year of university. I was walking down the college campus mm -hmm. and um, I heard this noise of people singing and dancing and, and, uh, and I was like, I'm curious, what is this thing? So I go there and I peer in and I see these people saying capoeira and I'm like, what the heck is mm -hmm. this thing? Um, I get the information, start attending classes, and boom, I'm hooked. I've always been one who's been into martial arts, but mm -hmm. there was something about capoeira mm -hmm. which drew me in. It's like a spiritual martial yeah, art. Yeah, it really is. Beautiful. It goes deep, and it's, mm -hmm. it's got so many layers to it. Mm -hmm. And fast forward 10, 15 years later, and I'm teaching capoeira at Hatcliffe community, oh, to ballet dancers here. Transferring that message. Yeah, exactly. But if I hadn't have done that, then that message wouldn't be here right mm -hmm. now, you know. So, think of the lives that are being impacted by capoeira, you know. Absolutely. And, but yeah. if I wasn't, if I didn't feed that curiosity, then I wouldn't have been you know, able to been bring able that. To, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, very nice. Yeah, so yeah, be, be curious. curious. Yeah, it, it sparks possibility. Yeah, you never I know like where that. it's going to take you. Good, good thing for a blog post. Yeah. <laughs> I already did it three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> but you can do my part too. Okay, cool. I will. Yeah, you should, actually. <laughs> yeah. While you're on tour. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. So, then just lastly, I would like to just finish on happiness. Mm -hmm. So, you seem like a really happy guy. Yes. And um, for me, um, like I was saying to you earlier, I tend to be proactive about happiness in my right, life. Right, right, right. So how is it that you are able to create happiness in your life? Mm. Um, first of all, I think I do it by defining happiness for myself. Good. And I define it as a state of being, all right? Mm -hmm. So it's not a thing, it's not something I can touch or mm -hmm. hold. Or, it's not a feeling, mm -hmm. you know, because the feelings change. You know, but it's a state of being. So I think of it as, um, if you picture a sea, right? If there's a storm at the top of the ocean, the surface of the ocean, the waves are choppy and cha cha it's crazy and boats are flying and everything, but you go below and it's calm all the time. It's, that's how, it, that's the state. There's certain animals that just stay there and are just like, just, but everything at the top is, can, can, can change. You know? mm -hmm. So I, I'll define happiness Depending as that. on the environment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They can affect, people are, people are affected by, by things like weather. Ah, you know, oh, it's gloomy today, so I'm going to be gloomy. Mm -hmm. it's like, but happiness is that that state, that constant state. That's kind of like your foundation, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a it's a pillar, you know, in your characteristic, in your life. Yeah. And so, regardless of this, there's always that. I can be sad. I could cry. I could be angry. But my state is constant. You know. Yeah. That's a really nice point, and I think it's really nice how it's a it's to stop outsourcing. Yeah, that's, that's nice. That's a um, lot for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, rather yeah, that than look within. Yeah, yeah. stop outsourcing. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and yeah. I guess did you come to to be in that have it as this happy state through things like mindfulness meditation? Yeah, 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 stillness. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So meditation through capoeira, through being a father, through being a husband. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's in so many things. Mm -hmm. It's my children. It's my the books I read, you know, it's just, uh, I realized that I've reached, in order to maintain this state, I constantly have to be stimulated by positive things, yes. with, with higher vibrations, you know, mm. so there's certain things, it's like, uh, it's like watching the Kardashians on TV, mm. it doesn't stimulate you, mm. like it, there's nothing, well maybe it does, but in well, the wrong way, but in the wrong way, yeah, yeah you need you know. like a high vibration, yeah. And let me not make fun of the Kardashians. <laughs> TV in general, yeah. right? It's 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 a. Uh, I call it an income reduction box. Yeah, exactly. It's not like it's, uh, you know you're not being stimulated. It doesn't challenge you, you know. But if you take something like okay, I'm learning wow. something. To, yeah, now all of a sudden I'm uh, I'm learning this class and and I need it's challenging me or the brain you're is reading, growing. and that's kind of kind of expanding your awareness, mm -hmm. your consciousness, your your thinking, you know, your whole being. I think. And, you know, and you're literally growing your brain. I mean, and that's incredible yeah. that we can do yeah, that. Yeah, you can but literally. But most do people that. don't. No, no, no. Okay, so key point: grow your brain through. <laughs> Stop watching TV, <laughs> reading, taking classes. Do yeah. you think that's stimulating? It's almost like you are what you. You know that phrase: you are what you eat. Yeah. But you are what you see. You are what you touch. You are what you smell. You are what, you, are what you, you think. think. You are what you. Yeah. So what are you watching? Watch TV, but you know there's yeah. things that you can value actually value stimulate you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay, amazing. Yeah. Thank you. So much. It's been such a pleasure having you on the show. So interesting, and I can't wait to get to know you even more and uh, to Thank work you. together in the future and create more amazing stuff. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. But do you want to share anything about what you have coming up, or um, yeah, apart from working with you in the future? Yes. Um, um, I will be traveling to Europe. Uh, end, of end of June, beginning of July. Um, I have a European store set up in Germany and Belgium. Um, Amazing. The, the details are on my on social media. Okay. Yeah. And your social media page is Mutsa Samuel. Yes, Mutsa Samuel. Yeah. So at Mutsa Samuel, Facebook slash Mutsa Samuel, all those. Um, I'm on Blogspot as well. Check out my blog there. It's called uh, Your Soul: Reconnecting with Your Authentic Self. 
Oh, amazing. Um, we've got some cool blogs that are up once a week. Yes, definitely read, yeah. read lots of blogs. Yeah. They're very profound and thought-provoking. <laughs> and they challenge you, though. Yes. And they, they shadow the ego, which is the intention, which is another thing I forgot to say. Okay. Gotta let the ego go. Yes, yeah. I'm all about yeah. this as well. It's, gotta, yeah. le it's rather than uh, leading from a heart space rather than yeah. a head space. Yeah, exactly. Which exactly. is what 99% of us do. That's it. That's it. And the ego has a a part to play in our lives, but it just needs to know its place. Yeah. It shouldn't be the dominant character. Yeah. It should be, have, be in the back seat. Yeah. Come out when it needs to. Yeah. Not. To protect us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, I'm definitely going to go and read some more about awesome. your blog. Awesome. Um, but yes, guys, be sure to connect with Mutsa on his Facebook or on read, check out his blogs and follow him on his European tour and watch the space for what's to come with us in the future. But Mutsa, thank you again. Thank, thank you for inspiring thank us and so helping much. other people find their passion, purpose and happiness. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. So thanks guys for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye.